to do tonight is mechanize these pivots down here. I've been trying to avoid this like the plague, but there is uh, no other options at this point. The elastic bands work, but uh, they're more of a liability than an asset, and so I'm going to have to mechanize these pivots. So what I plan on doing is mounting these servos up around this area right here. They have to clear the battery. There's a pivot here that they can't interfere with. This is one solid piece right here. So I'm going to mount the servos up around here somewhere and then drive them with a chain to gears down in here. So we're going to start taking this stuff apart and see how it goes. Alright, here's the progress we've made so far. We've taken and extended this middle piece up and we've cut this center piece, this pivot right here that goes in the center to where they will mount together. We still have the 45 degree gussets here and here and then we're going to take the servos and mount them somewhere along those lines right there once we figure out what position will allow the tank tread to clear. So again, um, don't cut any metal, any major pieces off. Don't cut it short because you can't put it back once it's cut short. But that's what it's going to kind of look like right there. And we're going to run a uh, chain from the servo down to a gear right there that will uh, move these tracks in a very precise and controlled manner. Alright, here's where we're at so far. We've extended this piece right here. We've cut the pivot so that fits in there. We've moved these bearing blocks from the outside to the inside. Now you notice you only put the screws on the right there and then diagonally. There's no room in there. And we're going to put the actual gear right through there. That's going to be the pivot. Then we're going to run a chain from here to here. And then we're going to use <clears throat> what's called a, a shaft lock. It's called a shaft lock right here. And we're going to put the shaft lock right over there. We're going to have to modify the shaft lock just a little bit to clear these two screws. So when the shaft then is locked in there like that, it's still free to pivot, but it's going to turn the servo. And when the servo turns then it will lift this up, push it, push it back down like that. So when it's all together, it'll be something, something like that. That's ah, coming along, coming along. Now, what I've done, put a shaft, a shaft lock right here. Put a small chain sprocket here small chain sprocket here, servo attached right there, and then we have the pivot right here. So what this allows us to do is very precisely control where that track is. Now, I was concerned that with this servo here that I would lose some of that, uh, some of the, the range of motion that free range of motion with the track, but uh, the, the chain has got enough stretch and is loose enough where I can still do this. Now, this all looks good, but it's a horrible, horrible mistake because when I have locked the shaft collar here, I've locked it all the way through, and so 
I'm going to put the other shaft collar, I'm going to put the other track on here and the other shaft lock. I have, in essence, then lost this, and I can only go up and down like that. Now it's 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 a it would be it would be perfect right now the way it is with one single servo one chain some sprockets and be able to do this as one but we have to be able to move them independently so what I have to do is take this sprocket and attach it to the outside frame and still allow the shafts to move freely. So, almost there, just have to make one little bitty design change. That happens. We're getting close though. Okay, what I have to do is take one of these larger gears. I can't use one of these small gears like I originally wanted to. I have to use one of these larger gears and I have to drill the center of this out so the shaft will spin freely. And then I have to attach this sprocket to the frame. And what I'm going to do is use these two screws that hold the standoff on and I'm going to I'm going to have to put a spacer between the frame and the gear. So I will attach this screw then through the sprocket, through the spacer, into the standoff that holds the track assembly together. That will then attach this sprocket firmly to the frame and allow the shaft to spin freely. So that's what I have to do now. Okay, so here's what we've done now. We have fixed this gear right here to the frame, run the chain up here to this servo, and we have moved that freely, and the shaft still moves freely, so we will maintain the independent track suspension and be able now to, when we move the chain, or move the servo, be able to place that wherever we need to place it. So that is where we're at right now and it's all about uh, just doing the same thing to the other side which should be pretty quick. Put this thing back together and see what happens. Alright so here we have the motorized pivots and you see we got two servos, chain sprocket, to a larger chain sprocket is attached to the frame. So we have independent suspension and we should be able now to control these tracks very very precisely. And we do have a little bit of slop which is good because it allows movement of the tracks without loading up the servos. So we just have to put everything back together see if it works. Alright here we go we're all buckled back up and we've added these two servos chain drive down to a sprocket that's attached to the frame and still have the independent suspension and we should be able to control exactly where those get placed so let's go put a battery on it and see what happens